Okay, hi. For anybody here that doesn't know me, I'm Kevin Kenny. I'm a semi-retired engineer, and for several years now I've been an active mapper in upstate New York with a particular interest in everything that's hiking related. And considering the discussions we've had, I've been playing a little bit with database comparisons between OpenStreetMap and databases of official trails. And in particular, I've been focusing on trails in New York State, and that's mostly because I'm familiar with them. I live and I hike here. And I'm familiar with the land management policies and with the GIS resources the state has available. It makes for a big enough data set to show off the issues, but it's small enough to be manageable that it doesn't bring a small computer to its knees trying to process all the data. And that means I've been focusing on state land. And that's because there's essentially no federal land in terms of like National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service in New York State. Uh, New York, to a, in large measure, had the idea of protecting that kind of land first, and the National Park Service largely copied it. In fact, New York, uh, New York's Department of Conservation likes to say the TR took that to Washington with them. Uh, New York has got state facilities that rival national parks in other states. The Adirondack Park is bigger than any national park in the lower 48, and the High Peaks Wilderness within that park which is just the largest of several, is about the same size as, say, Rocky Mountain or Grand Teton National Park. I'm further focusing specifically on um, uh, land that's managed by New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And uh, that's uh, just as with Uncle Sam, New York has got multiple land management agencies and complicated politics, but DEC is the largest. It manages a little over 6,000 square miles of uh, backcountry, and it publishes GIS data on about, on about 6,000 miles of trail. And so to start this study, I downloaded the GIS data for uh, DEC-owned land boundaries and for the DEC-managed roads and trails. Uh, of course, together with the OpenStreetMap data for the state, and I imported everything into tables in PostGIS. I also did a script that pre-processed the state's trail data to define corridors, which I defined as land 30 meters either side of the center line. I figured that was a good compromise that uh, if an open street map trail stays in a corridor, it is exceedingly likely to be the same trail, uh, but it allows for uh, GPS noise and the usual just inaccuracies in tracing things. Uh, I'm. If it's outside a corridor, I say that it's something else. I don't immediately leap to say that it's unofficial or unauthorized, and we'll see why as we move forward. And for the most part, my assumption seems to work. In this typical small snippet, you can see the corridors highlighted in blue, and you can see the open street map trails in black dashed lines. There's one unofficial trail here at the northeast corner. Uh, that turns out to be, it's an old trail that's unmaintained, it's perfectly legal. Hardly anybody uses it because there's a, there's a trail in much better condition going to the same place. Uh, there's, um, uh, and you can see too, in the southeast, there's a little section of trail where OpenStreetMap is misaligned with respect to the state data. So uh, the first thing to do here is just, I wanted to get an idea of the problem scale. So I took as trails any segment of open street map, of an open street map way of linear feature that's tagged with one of the highway keys that denote a trail. And I intersected those with the DEC land boundary. So now I've got a set of trails that open street map things are on DEC land. I intersected those with the trail corridors and classified the resulting segments as either inside or outside and uh, made a database view that reported on identification of those segments and what their geometry was. And when I did a quick summation to get the mileages, OpenStreetMap has got about 3,500 miles of trail mapped on the DEC properties. And of that, a little over two-thirds lies within the trail corridors, so I'd be very comfortable with saying authoritatively those are uh, authorized trails. And But there's obviously then nearly a third that doesn't align. And so you'd imagine this that's a huge problem, 
And I'd say, well, maybe, because it's more, it's more complicated than that. So I took the 25 longest unaligned segments, which account for a little under 10% of the total mileage, and actually did a deep dive. I compared them with data from all trails in Strava and Peak Bagger, and compared them with um, some uh, other data sets and with my own GPS logs, because it turns out that a fair number of the trails that came up in that troll I've hiked. Uh, and uh, uh, it turned out to be interesting. Uh, almost a third, or well, at least over a quarter, were fa definite false positives that they were either um, uh, private roads going to in holdings which DEC chose not to include on the official map, or else uh, they were cases where the official map was actually inaccurate according to the GPS tracks of where people actually walk, and OpenStreetMap had better quality data. So now I'm left with a little less than half that I've divided up into needs further analysis unofficial trail and uh, other, I'll get to that one other in the uh, second here. A lot of the false positives, oh, okay, I've been there, a lot of the false positives and the authoritative data. Um, I've seen, it's not just this agency, by the way, I've seen similar data quality from other federal and state agencies. In fact, in this data set, that one I marked other was a piece of North Country Trail that didn't match the National Park Service data on the trail either. It's been moved off road apparently since National Park Service GIS. Finger Lakes Trail Conservancy, which maintains that section of the trail had the data. But I've seen similar issues with the official Appalachian Trail Center line from ATC and so on that uh, sometimes it's just off. Most of the remaining unaligned data came in from imports in the early days of OpenStreetMap where we were importing what were supposedly authoritative data sources. And any of the open street map mappers that I see in the room uh, will tell you about um, the Tiger import and how we've been paying for that over and over in the time since it was imported. A lot of the, uh, the old data is describing abandoned logging tracks, some of it decades, decades abandoned. Uh, about half of those are verified by somebody's GPS tracks, so somebody hikes on them anyway, but I'd call those you know, condition and access constraints unknown. And the other half, I look for GPS tracks, I look for them on leaves off aerial photos, and as far as I can tell, Tiger just hallucinated them, and hallucinatory ways do turn up in the Tiger data. That's from U.S. Census Bureau, by the way, for anybody who's not familiar with it. Then moving on into the uh, tagging, the ones that turned up that I called unofficial trails, a lot of those are like class one and class two trails. And DEC uses a similar classification scheme to National Park Service. They're intentionally unmarked and they're intentionally unpublished in the GIS data. But uh, there's been a pilot program that um, particularly for the uh, summits of the Adirondack and Catskill high peaks that are trailless, there have been uh, networks of unsustainable herd paths emerging. And the uh, there's been a pilot program along with the hiking clubs to brush in the undesirable ones and subtly mark, perhaps by building a cairn at a turnoff or something like that, the uh, trails that they'd prefer to channel hikers onto while leaving them unmarked and only minimally maintained to preserve the wilderness character. Uh, it's been called a pilot program, even though it's been running for 25 years, and so that's complicated politics. It's likely always to be called a pilot program. Uh, so that's, and it turns out that every unauthorized trail that I saw in the database was one of these, to my personal knowledge. Uh, I, as I said, I only looked at the 25 longest segments, which is about 10% of the unauthorized data, but it certainly came up as being significant. So as a tentative conclusion, OpenStreetMap appears to be largely self-policing, which makes sense. Mapping an OpenStreetMap is a lot more work than just open, uploading a GPS log and trip report to a website. There's a lot of eyeballs watching it, 
and um, you know you do have to worry about tagging you do have to worry about stitching it together with a network it's a lot harder than uh, uh, just uh, what you do on a site like peak bag or all trails and it looks as if the biggest single problem with bad trail data in OpenStreetMap is the dead data not the rogue mappers and just uh, as a con as a a uh, conclusion and a transition to the tagging discussion. This is an example of trails of GPS tracks that I downloaded from other trip reporting websites. And it's a combination of several different sites. I won't uh, uh, name which because it's really not important. Um, I uh, chose not to map this route in OpenStreetMap. It's not an official route, but the authorities are aware of it. I could find it as early as a 1985 management plan for the unit in question. It's a fairly dangerous route. It's got some uh, pretty exposed scrambling with a lot of loose rock. It's infested with timber rattlesnakes. The trail visibility is minimal. You can see some compacted soil and crampon marks. It's mostly on rock. Uh, the route's pretty obscure and difficult to follow, particularly that turnoff you see at the west side, where it's going into a crack at a cliff that if you don't, if somebody hasn't told you where to look, you're not going to find it. Uh, but it's really the only feasible path up those two mountains, which are on a peak bagging list, so a lot of people do it. And, you know, this looks like a trail. You know, if you saw a rat's nest of tracks like this on Strava, you'd probably have no trouble with mapping it. But it isn't really a trail. It's just these are the set of ledges that actually make a connected path that'll get you onto the mountains. And while I was hiking there, I came up with one set of other uh, hikers who joked to me about one of the um, popular websites and, the one, and saying, I wonder how many newbies that site kills here. So this is when I chose not to map at all, but it, uh, since other mappers might not be as um, uh, conscientious or as um, uh, cowardly, depending on your point of view, I think probably needs to be some sort of tagging scheme that um, uh, would handle these th these examples that are just barely out of bounds. And I'd you know, like to kick that back to the people that are, to the people including me that are going to be discussing tagging. So well, thanks. Thanks for listening, and I'll um, hand it back to uh, Maggie and Diane.